Greetings, fellow scholars of the live stream. I'm Kudakuma. And I'm Peep Snibbles. Welcome to the Pulse of the Livestream's interview special, Assess Materia, where we interview the people who have made the Final Fantasy VII community such a great one. If you've missed our first two interviews with Vizuazoth and Kairosis, please check them out on the Cosmo Canyon Observatory channel. And remember, if you want early access to our interviews, you can join the Cosmo Canyon Observatory's Patreon. Details below. That's right, peeps. <laughs> Today we welcome to the bonfire a guest who has numerous voice acting credits to his name. He particularly rose to prominence in the Final Fantasy VII fandom by playing the rebellious speed demon soldier Roche in Remake. It is my great pleasure to introduce Austin Lee Matthews. Austin, thank you so much for joining us. How is life treating you? Thank you so much for having me. Life is going decently right now, actually. I'm taking a, kind of a, a rest weekend after... Uh, finishing up a, uh, a a very much crunch week of production. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Well, we will get to that. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we will talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a week, quite a week. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. So, um, I guess we can just jump right into questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. <laughs> Um, so it's, I mean, it's fair to say that while Roche wasn't necessarily a major character, like, like Cloud or Barrett or something, he quickly became a fan favorite. So how has the reception toward Roche and by extension towards you, uh, like, how has that been for you? so nice. <laughs> like, seriously, everyone's been mm -hmm. so sweet. Like, there, there, no, no, there, I um. haven't gotten any, like, like, as far as I've seen, I haven't gotten any hate for my performance. I haven't gotten anybody who's disliked my performance as far as I've seen, which is good. I'm sure there's people who don't like the character, but like I haven't seen anybody like really bash on me personally. So that's that's been nice to see. Um, cause... How often do you like go in and like read reviews and stuff? Like, is that something that you like were focusing on, like trying to look for like reviews of your performance not, and not stuff? Not necessarily or, reviews of my um, performance, but like uh, in like the first week after the game released, I was in like the Roche tag on Twitter, like hard. Like I was just like, I'm, like I want to know, I want to know what <laughs> people awesome. think about Roche. Like, like it's like there are people who were just like, eh, Roche is unnecessary. But then there were a lot of people who were just like, I love Roche, and there was a lot of fan art. Um, yes. Lots of people who just like like a, a big outpouring of love um, about the character and the performance that just really it made everything even better. Like it was already like an amazing experience getting to be a part of one <laughs> of my favorite franchises just ever. Um, yeah. But the fan reception to that was also just phenomenal, absolutely delightful. And a hundred percent. Oh, thank deserved. you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm really glad that 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 has been your experience because it. I mean, I love the character. He so, was so And much I think you did fun. amazing. So, um, yeah, yeah, no. I, I, I really like Roche too. <laughs> sure. I've got a bunch of Roche stickers on the back of my car. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh my god, that's great. <laughs> So now you just got to get a motorcycle, though. Uh, that's oh, going to yeah. be my fiance's job. He's the one who wants a motorcycle, and I'm the one who is afraid that if I get on a motorcycle, I will fall off like in five seconds. Um, uh, so you get to be the Jesse in the yeah, situation. I was yeah, say you can climb <laughs> I, on I, like Jesse. Yeah, I, I get yeah. I get to have the uh, um, the, the 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 pointy breastplate and poke him in the back with it, and yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I imagine that was painful for Cloud. Just like, like Jesse's just like, like giving him a hug, and he's like, "Okay, whatever." And then she hugs him more, and he goes, "Okay, that pierced the skin." Ow, 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 ow. He <laughs> won't need to see a chiropractor for a while. It's, it's fine. It all looks good. All good. So, you know, that's that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you have been really, really interactive with the yeah, community, which has been fantastic to um, see. Yeah, well, that's um, so you you you're looking at reviews, especially like the first week. And how about like when did you start like interacting with your fans and such, like via Twitter? And you have a Discord server. Um, I've always been kind of interacting with fans, like even before Roche was announced. Um, but like the minute that they announced Roche, there were people who were like, like, oh, this is the guy, this is the dude. Like, what's the character like? Like, what's what's going on? Like, because they announced him like <laughs> a couple weeks before the game dropped, 
Um, mm -hmm. And there are people who are just like, oh my god, I'm so excited for this new character. And I'm just like, ah, I hope you like him. Um, and <laughs> the, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was really overwhelming, like, especially when the game actually like released. It was so overwhelming that I actually was just like, okay, I need to lay down for a minute. Because it's, <laughs> I'm like exhausted from the amount of people like I, I was interacting with. It was at that point, I'm just like, okay, I need to really like, when big releases like this happen, I need to like interact a little bit and then take a break and then interact a little bit and then take a break. But then it gets to the point where after the hype, it dies down, I can do like my, my daily interactions that I do with my fans. Cause I interact with my fans every day because yeah. I, I, I have those daily um, Q and A's that I do that I, mm -hmm, I haven't done a mm -hmm. lot this week because I've been in crunch mode. Um, but, um, I have, I have those just cause like, I like talking to people like seriously, yeah. like it, it gives me something to talk about that, you know, and uh, interacting with people in general. Like I've found that like, even just like, you know, a casual, like, Hey, thanks. Like has made people's day. Like, and mm -hmm. like that, I know that how much it means to people. So I'm just like, yeah, I'll make time for people. Like, why not? Like seriously, it comes like... across as sorry. It comes across as very natural the way you interact with people. That you're not doing it because you feel you have to in order to raise your profile, but you're doing it because you want to. You've got that genuine desire to get to know people. Oh yeah, I generally don't care how many followers I have. I just really enjoy. Like I have always enjoyed being a a social person. Like I've I've been that way since since high school. Like in junior high, I was starting to get there. Um, but in high school, I always, like, I just liked talking to people. I liked making people happy. I've always liked being that person. Mm. Um, and, like, you know, I, 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 I don't do it for me. I do it because I literally just enjoy making people happy. So, yeah. Mm. So wholesome. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, I definitely know that everybody who you interact with definitely appreciates it. Yeah. So hopefully it's not, like, super overwhelming. Like, I can't even imagine, like, Especially, like, week of release, like, what your phone notification was like. Yeah. <laughs> like, hopefully you turn notifications <laughs> off. I, 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 that first week was overwhelming because I ended up gaining, <laughs> like, a thousand Twitter followers in the first two days oh. of release. And I was... Two days? And, oh and I was just like, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> hmm. I haven't had this big of a, uh, of, 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 of a follower growth since 2011. That's... Hmm. A little scary. Let's see how let's see how that goes. <laughs> and it was so just like I, I have learned that when big releases like this happen, it's like, okay, I'm gonna peter it a bit. I'm gonna, you know, talk to fans for a little bit and then I'll take some time for myself. And then I'll talk to fans for a little mm -hmm. bit. Because because uh, if not, I'm just like on my phone literally like all day talking to people. Cause mm -hmm. it's just, it was constant. The notifications <laughs> were were constant, and it got to the point where I was asking all my voice actor friends, "I'm like, how do you do it?" And one of my voice actor friends was like, "I don't." <laughs> <laughs> that's how I do it. Is I don't do it. I'm like, oh, well, that's not going to work for me. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I watched the Coupocon event um, mm. a couple of weeks ago, and I think was it Mallory Lowe who said something very similar that she woke up in the morning and suddenly had all these twitter followers and yes where the hell have these all come from <laughs> yeah we, we we were all like sending people to mallory like w w like w whenever i i, I uh they, they, whenever they, they talk about like oh thank you for all the followers and all that i'm just like give them more followers <laughs> like, like like every time like i'm, I'm just like give them your love you <laughs> they made you happy now give them your happiness <laughs> yeah i absolutely well, I, I yeah, the whole cast is fantastic, and I loved seeing them them grow in popularity more and more because they're all just phenomenal. Um, it, it, it was an absolute crime when I found out that John Bentley had fewer followers than I did at the time of me being announced as Roche, and I said no. He's Barrett. <laughs> Follow Barrett, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> and, and thankfully now he's got a, a much bigger following than I do. And I'm just like, oh, thank God. Um, but yeah, when, when I saw that, I was just like, mm -mm, no, you are you are not stopping to follow him until he passes me double. Because <laughs> he's he's the best character in any game. 
<laughs> he he's, oh he gosh. is absolutely fantastic and I he's another him. one who's very very interactive with the community oh and yeah it's so good to he, see he's like the nicest person you'll ever meet in like the history of the planet too I, he's like, even i got to meet him a couple times i 100 <laughs> percent agree we we ended up we actually met for lunch um uh like a while ago and we we, we, we met for lunch and he was just just immediate big mm-hmm. dad friendly energy yep. just like comes up to you yes. and he, he just goes there's that guy and you go up and he just immediately <laughs> goes in for the hug and just oh my gosh yeah he's just so delightful just uh, Absolutely. like the entire time i was while we were having lunch i just had the biggest smile on my face because he gives off just the most just just the most positive energy out of, mm-hmm. It's contagious. It really is. Yeah. It seriously is. And he was just so excited because we were um, hanging with the guys um, from Crashing Game Night, and they were they were talking for they were just like talking just about life. Like he's like he was like he was just like hey uh, so like what's going on with you know whatever life thing was going on and they're just like oh you're talking asking about that all right like you know like legitimately interested in talking to them and then mm-hmm. uh, they're just like hey so uh, and then they they put they pulled out their uh, their Final Fantasy trading cards and he's just like they finally <laughs> released Barrett and then and he's like yeah and he's just like awesome and immediately was like looking at him he's like oh that's cool he's like where do you want me to sign it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so awesome yeah it was it was the, he, he gets so he gets so into it he like he he loves barrett like as much as we do um oh god there was another um and it, it was another interview that we did together where it was like the day that they announced the barrett me costume in super smash brothers uh ultimate yes and he like like uh the guys were just like yeah so um what was your reaction to seeing barrett in uh in, in smash and he was just like Barrett's not in Smash. And they go, no, Barrett's in Smash. And he looks at him, he goes, he's a V costume. Oh. And he like immediately calls his wife over. He goes, honey, honey, you know that game the kids play? <laughs> Barrett's in it now. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just so just like, like, oh my gosh, this man is lovely. <laughs> oh. He's so, so, such a delight. That's... I love him so much. Oh, he's so fantastic. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I will say that you give off very similar energy. Mm. So we haven't met in Thank person, you. but I absolutely feel the same talking to you. <laughs> Thank you yeah, very I much. I haven't stopped smiling since this interview started. So. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Playing Roche wasn't your first role in a Final Fantasy related game, though, was it? Uh, no, it was not. I was uh, Sid in Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon, Everybody, which is another one of my favorite so roles. I love that game. It's so cute. I have played through most of it, but the last dungeon was really hard, so I paused it and haven't picked it back up. Um, <laughs> but it's so cute. It was my first Mystery Dungeon game that I ever played. I hadn't played a game in that format before. Um and getting to be a part of that and seeing that really sweet, touching story unfold was just delightful. Um, and the the music is all lovely. A lot of it is like um, different remixes of other Final Fantasy stuff. Sid's theme is actually a an arrangement of, oh gosh, what is the name of the song? It's the... From um, Final Fantasy IX. Uh, um, Fest- <laughs> Fest- Festival of the Hunt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That's a cool theme to have associated to your character. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the Sid version is called, um, I believe it's called Treasured Memories. And okay. it's so fun. <laughs> that's awesome but yeah I, I love Sid he's one of those characters who is like as positive as I am and that's 90% of the reason Aww. why I love him <laughs> it's I bought the game like when it came out because I'm like this is the most adorable thing I've ever seen and I had Chocobo Mi- uh, Mystery Dungeon 2 for the original PlayStation uh-huh. um, so I was like hey I want to play this but I never played it um, but I love the the cutesy like aesthetic, and I was like, ah, oh, I need to play it. But I just haven't played it yet because I'm so terrified of the difficulty spike that I hear is a thing. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it, the, the the final dungeon was 
pretty brutal. Um, but other than that, like, the game itself, it's just so delightful up to that point that I think <laughs> even if you stop at the worth last it. dungeon, um, I would say it's pretty worth it just because it, it's so much fun. Um, and uh, I'll move it up on the list. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely recommend that. You do like the cute games, though, Kuta. I do, I do. <laughs> yeah. On that, we are in agreement. <laughs> Did you play World of Final Fantasy? <laughs> no, but I have it. Um, I, I, oh, I, do I, it. I watched it. <laughs> Riker play it, and I, I have seen the, um, the, the, the dance at the end because I, 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 yeah. I, I saw the dance <laughs> mashed up I, before I actually saw the actual original dance with the with the song. I, I, I saw it. There was a meme going around where somebody took a this like I don't remember like the name of the song, but they took they took this like instrumental and mix it up with I want to say an Eminem song <laughs> um, and it was them just dancing and it was two to the one from the one to the three I like blue 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 and I like good trees smoke so much weed you wouldn't I've believe it. Like, uh, yeah it, 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 it's there was a meme that was going around and whenever when, when I saw that the first iteration of the meme that I saw was with the Final Fantasy characters dancing and it synced up with the song so well that I thought that the video had been made for that. Oh, um, oh my gosh. And then I found out later, I'm like, oh, that's World of Final Fantasy? Oh, I'm going to have to play this game because that was delightful. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I've seen um, the uh, the special moves like uh, the uh, the Dolphin mm -hmm. Blow and Omni Slash and uh, um, mm -hmm. whatever uh, Gilgamesh does. Sephiroth's is so adorable and over the top all at once. <laughs> it's great. It's so I don't good. have Sephiroth. I'm so bitter about this. I don't know how to get him. I even bought the DLC and I still don't have Sephiroth. Grr. I, 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 I'm pretty sure it was a pre-order bonus. I have Sephiroth, but I buy, but, but, but that's only in physical form. I actually, I have, I have a couple of figurines from World of Final Fantasy. I, 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 oh I, I have uh, Lightning and I have Sephiroth. I got him in a blind box. And when I got Sephiroth, I was just like, <laughs> yes. Cause that was like the week <laughs> after I booked Roche. And I'm just like, oh my God. Perfect, perfect. timing. <laughs> so he's up with my Final Fantasy oh. collection. Okay, it's full of my collectibles and the whole top shelf is just Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy VII stuff. Mostly Final Fantasy VII. Um, <laughs> What's your favorite piece in there? Um, a magic materia. Um, the green materia mm -hmm. um, that I got from KupoCon. Yeah. Um, and I also... Um, I have a... Um, a cover, um, I, guess, I, guess, I guess a box that it's the Final Fantasy VII remake box, but it's got a custom cover. It's this gorgeous, gorgeous painting yes. of Cloud, and it's that iconic, it's that iconic shot with him looking up at the at Mako Reactor One, and it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that it, that is the prized, um, prized like centerpiece of that whole thing. It's beautiful. I, I got one because I went to one of the KupoCon launch parties. Nice. So I got one of those too. So I definitely know exactly what you're talking the about. The weirdest item on that shelf. Um, well, Ooh, that's a the good second one. weirdest is I have two bottles of the uh, the Chocobo orange soda that they released, I think, with Final Fantasy 15. So we we kind of talked about it. You, you mentioned your radio show. Um so I'd love to kind of like dive a little bit more into that because okay. that's super, super exciting. So obviously, um, you know all about it. It's called Megaton Girl and it's about, uh, well, you describe it as about love and superheroes. Yes. So that's, um, that's what it's about. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, that already in and of itself sells it to me, um, for me, but for people who haven't heard about it, um, can you give me maybe a little bit more, um, of a teaser of kind of like what it what it's about and then we can certainly link them down below or wherever they're listening we'll include a link so you can uh, check out the first the first two episodes are available now and the third one is on its way the third one actually just released on patreon at eight o'clock this morning oh wow well there it yes, is yes and it, it'll it'll be up publicly next uh next saturday well whenever we record this it's uh saturday may 8th is when it's going to go up uh publicly perfect um 
But yeah, I, I've actually started describing uh, Megaton Girl as the story about a superhero and the woman that loves her. Mm -hmm. um, and it is basically, it is about um, two best friends who have to deal with um, a superhero named Captain Valiant who is just, uh, just a, can I swear? Of course. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He is just a major <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, he, he abuses his power consistently. He's a horrible womanizer. He is every convention horror story that you've ever heard wrapped <laughs> into one person. Um, and he, he just somebody who should not and does not deserve to be a superhero. Um, and they he also did a have very deal... good job of making him absolutely loathsome. I have to oh, say. Oh, wait until you hear episode three. Oh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're going to, if, if you hate him now, you're going to, you're going to really hate him over the course of the next three episodes. Oh boy. Um, that's, that's like a really good character, but yeah. also like a terrible one. Like, so, like they're so terrible that it's like, oh, so good though. He, he, he's one of those slime balls that you just, yep. you, you hate to be around him, but you love to hate him. Yep, yep. Um, and the actor who plays him, uh, uh, P.M. Seymour, just absolutely owns <laughs> every scene. Because my direction to him was he's a cross between Patrick Warburton and the asshole narrator Bruce Campbell from the Spider-Man 2 game. Um, <laughs> and that that is 100% his personality, just the... Oh yeah, sure. You can do that if you want, loser. <laughs> like you know, like that mm -hmm. kind of vibe. Um, I get really strong um, Captain Hammer from Doctor Horrible Sing Along Blog. Like, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, that that uh, actually Doctor Horrible, I I think inspired me a lot more than a lot of actual like like m like more well known comic book movies have. <sighs> It's so Just, good. <laughs> it's fantastic. Like, Megaton Girl is obviously a lot more uplifting yes. than, <laughs> uh, than Dr. Horrible is, because Dr. Horrible is uh, depressing. Uh. Um, but, yeah, no, he, he's, he's got um, different kind of loathsome than yeah. Captain Hammer. Like, Captain Hammer, oh. like, you know, he's just, he's just arrogant um, and just, you know, he's a jerk. But mm -hmm. Captain Valiant is, like, 10 different levels of jerk yep. above that. He's not just, you know, you know, a womanizing bastard. He's also, you know, he's corrupt. He uses his power um for just, you know, horrible reasons. He's uh he you'll find out some stuff about Chuck in the next couple episodes that'll make you just go, "Why is he a superhero?" <laughs> um and actually in episode 3 if you listen, you'll go Oh, oh! There's more going on with Chuck. Like, oh boy! Like, you know, there's there's this, there's a scene in which he has a discussion with a character who is voiced by the lovely Christopher Smith, um, in which you get some, would you start seeing some not just you know bastard but like evil, Ooh. just just actual actual evil coming from this dude. I can't wait to listen to it now. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, I'll I'll I'll, sh I'll share it with you because it's up on Google Drive. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, anyway, as I was saying, um, on top of that, they have to deal with this guy named Chuck Bradford, who they find out later on in the first episode is Captain Valiant, um, <laughs> who is just this guy who he's, um, you know, with, with the whole thing with Ch Chuck Chuck and Captain Valiant is he uses his news media to make himself look better and mm. just co constantly, like really like over inflate everything that he's ever done. Um, he's like 16 abs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just like, <laughs> like, like uh, we have a 12 pack, we have a 12 ab <laughs> minimum on every issue. Um, but uh, um, so th they're just tired of dealing with him and they're just like, okay, you know what? We're, we're gonna, we, we, we really want to put this guy in his place but we don't have the power to do that. Um, and so, so while they are on their first date, um, Co uh, Laurel wishes, uh, wait, no, Connie wishes that, um, uh, that she could, you know, uh, put Laurel's boss in his place and Laurel wishes that Connie could, you know, kick Captain Valiant's butt and, 
um, whether or not the wish actually was a wish you know that's debatable but a meteor basically lands on connie and gives her superpowers um and so they decide like you know what i've got super i've got superpowers now i'm gonna do my best to um give the world a hero that they deserves and kick valiant to the curb um partially because we hate this dude but mostly <laughs> because the world does not deserve somebody that horrible mm -hmm. as a hero they mm -hmm. need somebody who actually gives a shit um and that is where Connie comes in and where uh, Connie's manager, Kirby, uh, is helping her get toward. Um, and ultimately, it is the story of these two people um, and how they just absolutely bring the best out of each other. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the story that I want to tell. I want to tell that kind of love story. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. The reception to episode three so far has been great from the patrons. Um, we listened to it with uh, the cast, well, some some of the cast and some of the crew, um, the other night, and we just they, they were all just delighted by it. Um, it, it, it I, I think I this isn't me being like, oh, I'm good, but I <laughs> I, I, I I feel like the, the 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 seeing people say that every episode is better than the last episode is making me go like, okay, I feel confident that this is good and that I can make something good and continue to tell a good story if I keep getting better with every episode. And that is so far from the feedback has rung true. And I hope that I can keep up that, um, that momentum to keep making every episode better than the previous episode. That's great. Yeah. I haven't actually, obviously I haven't seen episode three yet, looking forward to it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed episode one. I didn't, I didn't know if I would because it's not my usual kind of thing. Um, but I just, I, it was so, it was really engaging. It was Thank a you. good story. The characters were good. The acting <laughs> was good. Mm -hmm. It was really, really enjoyable. Thank you. Yeah, the, the characters are really what what really drives the story and the cast is all phenomenal like this the characters would not be as enjoyable as they are without the amazing cast that we've got um and amanda who is our lead um she just every episode just knocks it out of the park so michelle who plays her girlfriend laurel um is also just phenomenal and who like in episode three and like every episode so far, but especially episode three, has some just spectacular moments where you really feel like her insecurities shine and as she overcomes them, um, you really are just like, yeah, yeah, you got this. And Michelle just absolutely just, mm, just dominates it. it. It's a really, really good thing to show because I think with a lot of media, with, with superheroes, then, you know, they're always these perfect characters. But I want to see the, the fallible ones, the people who have this thrust upon them, and they have other things to deal with as well. It's not just about their superpowers. They've got all the other crap that life throws at you. Yeah, exactly. Um, and while Connie has the benefit of being able to focus a lot on the hero stuff, like, her life isn't just that. Mm. Um, and, um, and, and like Laurel, her whole thing is that she has like two jobs on top of also helping Connie with her hero work. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Laurel does probably more work than Connie does like on any given day, even <laughs> though Connie does a lot of physical work. Laurel is the one with mm -hmm. two jobs and then a side gig as basically, you know, Oracle. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, for, for, all you, for all you Batman fans out there. Um, uh, but, um, like, L L Laurel puts in so much, so much work. Um, and, like, she, they are both equally important to the team. Um which is great and fitting because they're mm -hmm. both equally important to each other. Um, 
Yeah. And I think that people are really going to enjoy seeing their relationship grow and seeing Laurel get more and more confident and seeing Connie overcome obstacles that are in her way and seeing her grow as a hero, especially in the episode four, which is coming out, I th- hopefully, hopefully by June. Um, well, that's fast. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, episode four is going to really, we, we've, we've seen them begin their journey and episode four is really going to be where we start to see um, them get really put through their paces in terms of like actually like the struggle that comes with being a hero and episode five is where, well, you'll see what happens in episode five. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to um, seeing people's reaction to what is to come in the, in this particular arc. I'm excited. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The relationship between Connie and Laurel is, is quite pivotal to the story though, isn't it? It's a uh, it's yes. really great positive representation of a of a loving couple. Hmm. Yeah, and that is wholly drawn from like my own ex- in, my, my my own experience with my fiance, who mm. he is extremely just supportive of me constantly. And there are so many times where he and I will be listening to an episode, and Connie and Laurel will have a conversation, and he'll just say, "Is is." is this just us? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just like, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, the inspiration, I mean, the, I mean the, 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 the representation in this show really comes from me wanting to see my friends get representation that they don't normally get. Mm. Um, Cause like, I mean, point to, a pansexual superhero that isn't Deadpool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like seriously. Um, and, and, and I should I should say a positive superhero representation is Deadpool. I wouldn't consider like he's he's pan representation, but I wouldn't exactly call him a positive pan representation because he's yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I really wanted to see that because I mean like. I don't have a bunch of superheroes that I can look up to. Like, I mean, like, I, 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 I have some that I do, but none that I can really, like, see myself in. Yeah. Like, there's no, there's, there's not a fan, a fat pansexual superhero out there. <laughs> um, and that's what I wanted. Um, and that's what Connie is. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then the, there, there, there are other, like, there, there's a superhero who shows up in episode three whose name is, uh, Lightsmith and Shadow Thing. They are a superhero with dissociative identity disorder. And we have a member of our crew who has dissociative identity disorder. And I, I had written this character after the movie Split was released because that movie for me was the straw that broke the camel's back. I was so sick and tired of seeing just constantly dissociative identity being portrayed as a villainous trait Mm. when it is not it is a mental disorder that people can't help and generally people who write stories where someone with dissociative identity disorder is the villain generally don't understand dissociative identity disorder at all Mm. Um, which is why the entire time I've been working on episode 3 I was talking to my friend who has dissociative identity disorder and like saying like hey, like, you know, like, what would happen with this? What would happen with this? Like, do you ever, like, have actual conversations with yourself? Um, and there there were moments where, like, like yeah, like, sometimes they will, like, have, like, not just a conversation, like, internally, but, like, sometimes they'll just forget that they're, like, not alone and have an actual verbal conversation with themselves. Um, and... And, 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 and stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, like people need to really do more due diligence into researching stuff because like people with dissociative identity disorder aren't evil. Like they're people seriously, like, like occasionally there's a, a couple more people in their head. Um, but that's, you know, that's just how they are. Um, and every single person, person who I every single I should say alter um that who I have met from my friend has been just a delightful person different personality but different uh di- different a different kind of per- different kind of I guess um view of themselves 
Um, but they're all just, you know, they're still my friend. Yeah. Mm. Plural. Plural friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm really happy that they, they were able to, like, really, like, when we listened to the episode the other day, they were very moved by um, the character because they could tell that there was a lot of love mm-hmm. put into the character and that the character was so full of love. Um and I really think that people are actually going to really, really enjoy this character because they were a delight to write and um, they really come from a, a, a place of love. Um, but uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's I, I, great. <laughs> yeah, I want I want to give my friends like heroes that they can look up to. That That is such a wholesome aspiration. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How many times is the word wholesome going to be oh, used? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's true. And, you know, you're absolutely right in what you're saying, that media does tend to latch on to these things that are outside of the perceived norm. And they, they do, to an extent, villainize it or, you know, make it yeah, they really make do. it a problem. But it's it's not. It's it's just a facet of who somebody is. Yeah. And like one of the things that my friends said that they were tired of in media was like portraying dissociative identity disorder, like a person turning into a monster, like, like an almost like werewolf, like mm-hmm. transformation into like another person. Um, and that's just not how it is. Like sometimes, yeah. like sometimes it's just like, they, they 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 can be what is my friend refers to as blendy where like um one one altar will be kind of taking like taking the reins so to speak while another altar will just be kind of just hanging out just in the background just 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 kind of there just like hey how's it going um and they can you know have a conversation with themselves and come up with you know like es- es- essentially uh, use both sides of their brain to, you know, plan. Hmm. Um, and just, you know, and, and um, my friend actually has to sometimes um, refresh themselves after we've had a conversation, which is bless Discord for having text conversations <laughs> because they don't always remember. Uh, and I, I could have a conversation with one alter and their main alter will not like know what we've not remember what we've talked about. And so they'll go back and be like, Oh, okay. That's what we talked about. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, cause each, what each one in, in control is, uh, basically has like a different set of memories more or less. Right. Um, yeah. Hmm. I must admit mm. it's, it's not something I know a great deal about. Um, there was something I was reading recently. I, I can't even remember why it come up. Uh, but yeah, it was particularly about that, you know, the, the, the difference in the personalities that it's, it's not as it is portrayed in things like, did you ever see the movie Sybil? No, no it, it was based on a book by a, a psychiatrist, psychologist, I forget which, who purportedly dealt with a, a client who had well, they, what did they call it back then? Schizophrenia? No, multiple personality disorder. I think it was. That's what. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what. It, that's what it yeah. used to be called. It's it, it is. But the, yeah, it's no longer called that. Yeah, yeah. The, the psychologist has since had her work completely debunked. I mean, she she sensationalized it for the sake of getting a novel out of it. Um, hmm. Oh but yeah. The problem is that became almost like a cornerstone of media portrayal of that kind of thing and that's that's, mm-hmm. that's what people associate it with it's like it's like people being scared of sharks because, because of jaws, of jaws. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's yeah. that same Absolutely. sort of you know that that idea has been implanted and it's very very difficult to shift yeah it re- and it really is and i want to like i want to at least be able to show that hey no they're literally just people like you and me yeah you know it's just occasionally, well, not not occasionally, but there's just you know there happens to be more than one person in there, mm-hmm. um, and I, I, like I said, I've I've made friends with several several of their alters, um, and there's the the most common one uh, refers to himself as their 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 older brother basically, 
Like they 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 take over whenever like things are getting way too stressful and mm. they need somebody to just be an autopilot for a bit. Mm. They just need somebody like, you know, like get get the work done around the house, get any like, you know, any chores done, any bills done, any you know, stuff that they just do not have the mental energy for. This this older brother, quote unquote, just comes in and just gets it done and then we talk for a bit and, you know, that's just that's just how it is. And then I'll just be like, Oh hey, am I talking to X person's name? Um, and, the, and they'll go like, oh, yeah, it's me. And I'll just go, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, the, and I can generally tell who is in control at any given time because they all talk so differently. Well, the, the main altar is, like, really, like, super casual, like how I talk. Um, but then the older brother is extremely formal. Mm. Like, like, um, like, like, librarian <laughs> formal. <laughs> Uh, um and they're great <laughs> like honestly and then they they have they have one altar who's just 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 this you know this just little shit he's just he's he's just like yeah that's yeah, just how it is he's just just really sassy and, and snarky but like um still you can tell just like good at heart yeah um and it just it all just just one big lovely person honestly well, and that's so great that like you are yeah. trying to represent that in the positive light and for what it actually is. Like, I mean, obviously everybody has different experiences and all of these kind of things, but like you're clearly doing your research for like sh- making sure that you are showcasing it in like a positive, uplifting, and clearly like I don't know. It's an important message to represent, and I think that that's. It, it, I mean, we've already said it, but it is, it's wonderful that you're doing that. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily super easy to do it either. No. Not because like, not because it was a difficult for me to like understand, but it was, it was difficult for me to integrate it in a very natural way mm-hmm. in a way that I didn't have to basically explain what it was mm-hmm. because the, the, the actual explanation of the character, cause there is a, there is a moment where I, we have to like, you know, address the, um, the elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. And like be like, okay, like, you know, how am I going to introduce that this is one person with three different personalities and two of those personalities have different superpowers? And I was like, why don't I just say it like that? (laughs) Like, like it got like it got to the point where I I rewrote the introduction scene like 20 times until I finally was like, the simplest explanation is going to probably be the most effective one. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's it's literally just like one one bit where the character introduces themselves as, you know, ah, I am Lightsmith and Shadow Thing together. And what? Oh, sorry. Shadow Thing wants to introduce himself real quick. And then Shadow Thing takes over and goes, hey, I'm Shadow Thing. I make shadows do weird shit. Okay. <laughs> I have to say, I love, yeah. I love the concept that the different personalities have different superpowers. That's yeah, they, and their powers actually, and their powers actually changed quite a bit because I wanted to like really like have the personalities, like reflect the, um, the the, the personalities and the, their powers reflect their personalities because mm. originally, Lightsmith and Shadow Thing were, um, Gale and Richter. Um, Gale was basically like a, a Thor kind of a character, and Richter was, uh, Sam Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> um but it, like one can contr- one could control the weather and the other one could control the earth um and then river was you know the river between the the sky and the ground um but i kept river just because that that felt like the river between just made so much sense <laughs> um and plus they're gender fluid haha <laughs> river <laughs> um um a- and so lightsmith ended up being just like like I wanted them to be as opposite as possible. So Lightsmith is very much inspired by um, Vegas magicians, <laughs> um, like super super bombastic. Yeah. Just like oh, the spotlight's on me at any given time. <laughs> and then there's Shadow Thing, who's basically just like I I, I describe Shadow Thing as just like a male raven. Okay. Um, yeah, just just like super, just like hey, what's up? <laughs> I, I make shadows do weird shit. All right, what's up? That's great. Um, <laughs> And the, the, the actor who portrays them, Anjali, uh, uh, Anjali Kunapaneni, um, absolutely owns every gosh dang scene. Mm-hmm. 
think they are so good. So good as River. Um, I, 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 oh my gosh, just... Okay, I'm done gushing. I'm done gushing. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I could, love it. I could gush about, I could gush about my cast for years. <laughs> oh, please, please do because you know, they they yeah, deserve they, they, a lot they, of credit. They, People work hard, you know. Mm-hmm. They they really do. They really do. But I I I'm very glad that I get, I get to work with these folks because like. They're all so good. I'm working with people who I would want to work with anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, I, I, I was introduced to Anjali because of Megaton Girl, because uh, we were originally going to have another actor playing River, um, but they had to drop out because U.S. immigration is being horrible to them right oh, now. Um, and so they weren't going to be able to have their own recording space for at least two weeks. And I'm like... The episode's supposed to be out in two weeks, <laughs> and so I, 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 so I put out a call for um, non-binary actors, I saw that. and and Anjali was just like, "I'll do it." And so I listened to their demo, um, and it was just like, "Oh, I, th- I think that's River," <laughs> um, and just absolutely just just floored me with their performance. Uh-huh. Uh, they they really like they they deserve a lot of lot of love so give them your love, <laughs> um, but then uh, we've also got you know we've got Amanda who plays Connie another actress who needs just a lot more a lot more attention that she gets she's um, Vivi in the Mystery Skulls animated uh, uh, most recent video with me, um, and then there's Michelle who's another um, lesser known um, lesser known actress who just, oh my gosh, she portrays Laurel in just such a, a sweet and mm-hmm. caring way. And also, while also having her like bigger moments, because she doesn't have a lot of like like loud, I get excited moments, but she does have those those moments where she, um, she is, the, the, the character is autistic and her special interest is superheroes. Um, and so she gets really enthusiastic about superheroes. <laughs> Um, and she she really portrays that really well. Um, and then we've got Jason, who is Megatron in Transformers. So it's really funny <laughs> that we've got Megatron Man, who is helping Mega, Megaton Girl <laughs> uh, being, you know, a superhero. That was completely unintentional. I just, I met Jason and was just like, I think I found Kirby. Because <laughs> we, we'd, we'd, we'd been looking for Kirby for a long time. Because like, like, we had another actor who I, I wanted to play him. Uh, but the actor had to leave the project to work on other things, mm-hmm. and you, he just didn't have the time for it. And so I'm just like, oh man, I don't know who's gonna be Kirby. And I, uh, as soon as I met Jason, I'm just like, that's that's my guy, <laughs> that's my guy right there. Uh-huh. Um, and we've got, uh, um, oh gosh, we've got Danielle McRae, who is also in Final Fantasy yeah. VII remake yeah. as Gwen. Um, and this is another longtime friend and a delight. Um, and then we've got Mark Allen Jr., who is getting pretty big in anime recently. Um, he's Ren Koha in Magi. Um, he's Makino in The Ones Within. He is my dearest, 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 oldest voiceover friend. Uh-huh. Um, and he, he's, he's Wrangler, uh, who is Danielle's character's husband. Um, and he's also become... Um, as he describes it, the, the as he described it yesterday, our shadow producer, <laughs> um, uh, who has he he was a big part of how we were able to get episode three out so quickly, um, because he's really helped with that. Um, then we've got uh, Christopher Smith, who is my favorite character in Gurren Lagann, Keaton. Um, and you also Emperor in Dissidia Final Fantasy. Oh, wow. Um, and he plays a character who, um, well, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> he, he, he plays a character that we may have name dropped at least once in the series. Oh. Um, and then we've got, uh, Alex Weitzman, um, who voices Moishi Edelstein, who is the crew's favorite character <laughs> we all love moishi he's basically just that he is this um he's this old man he, he, he who runs a jewish delicatessen and he's kirby's <laughs> oldest friend and he is just 
so sweet and so kind and so just like, hey, yeah, come on in and have fun and sit down and I'll take care of you. Like one of those just super just like, you know, loves everybody and wants everybody to feel comfortable and happy kind of characters. <laughs> polar opposite of Kirby <laughs> uh, like seriously like Kirby is just this grumpy curmudgeon and, <laughs> and you you wonder how these two could possibly be friends until you see them talking to each other and you're like oh that's why because <laughs> they they like like Moishi makes Kirby happy and Moishi loves making Kirby happy like they're just dear 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 friends who have been friends for like 60 years <laughs> um the best and, and then we've got Tiana Camacho, who is another just wonderful, wonderful actress, um, who is playing a character who we talked about in episode two, whose name is Nora. Um, and there are people who have kind of started to figure out who Nora is. Um, they've started putting the pieces together. And I'm very delighted to confirm whether or not they're right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was I was having a live stream, and somebody like as soon as soon as Kirby said something to Nora, somebody in the chat was just like, "Wait, what? What did he say to her? What? Hold up, who's Nora?" <laughs> So we got a great cast. Got a great cast. It sounds like it. Sounds like you've got a fantastic team. Oh god, they're so good. <laughs> and our artists are both are they're so good too. <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. I, I I love our I love our team. I love our team so much. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> are you sure? Don't want to do a little bit more? I'm, no, I'm good. I'm good. We don't want to, we I'm don't good. mind gushing, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what? It's it's so good to hear your level of enthusiasm and love for it you, you obviously are really really into what you're doing and that's fantastic you're living the dream yeah i i, I it's, it's what i've always wanted to do i've always wanted to make my own show and when we released the pilot i i cried because i'm like oh my god it's real mm. like it's it's like i've i've, I've actually done it i've like We'd been working on it for at that point seven years when we released the pilot, but we really when we released episode one, it had been eight years. Um, but just like hearing the characters finally talk in a like in in a complete way and telling a complete A to B story, I was like, oh my gosh, these characters who have been in my head since 2012 are actually here. Like it, it really it felt just it was a very just satisfying moment to finally say like I have made something that I can be proud of it wasn't just some some dumb meme that I spat out in five minutes and got a million views on YouTube <laughs> it was something that I put true love into into every every moment of it there there have there has been literal blood sweat and tears <laughs> poured into Megaton Girl there have been a lot of sleepless nights working on this this week in particular Oh my gosh! Because we we had some some hiccups with production, um, where one actor, when he submitted his lines, I I was working on a scene and realized like, as like part way into the scene, I'm like wait a second, only half of his lines are in this file. Oh no! Are we gonna have to re-record? And so he would like did like a lot of digging to actually find his lines. Um, but by that point, I literally had a week to make the episode before it released today. And I was just like, all right, all right, time to uh, dust off the old uh, the, the old Coca-Cola bin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was finally able to get some sleep last night because I'm just like, okay, it's done and it can go up. <laughs> I was being such a relief and a satisfying feeling for you. It, it's it's good to not to not be stressing about the episode right now. I'm going to be stressing about episode four uh, on Tuesday because that's when I'm gonna, I I got to finish uh, writing it. Yeah, but, uh, I, I was going to say you, that you've you've done with the stress for the moment until you do yeah. it all over again. But thankfully, episode four is already partially written, and we are we have a month to do it instead of just a week to do it now, um, and. I think 
people are really going to like episode four because it is it, it is it is different from the first three episodes. It still has that same kind of comedy in it, um, but I'm really going to be putting the pressure on to Connie, especially mm. in this episode, because um, for those of you who hear the title of episode three during the post credits, you um, you will you will realize what episode four is going to be about and you'll go, Oh shit. We're finally getting that. Okay. Um, and yeah, I, I think the people who have heard the title of the next episode are really excited. <laughs> I, I know that when, cause I hadn't titled the episode on, cause I, I did have a title for the episode for a long time. And as I was recording the credits, I was like, no, I think this has to be the title of the episode. And I surprised our lead actress with it. I surprised Amanda with it when we listened to it. And she was like, oh, that's the title for the next episode. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's going to be fun. <laughs> like, I, I, I felt the immediate, oh, dear, I have to act. <laughs> that's, that's a good reaction to get and, when you get an... Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like I, like I, I, there. Like she was just like, oh, that was great. And then it said episode four, and then I said the title, and she was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I imagine obviously COVID threw a huge wrench in your convention plans and ability to do stuff. Uh, like when yeah. it came out, how? Like, I don't know. I feel like. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to like drag down the mood or anything, but like, how do you deal with that? Like, I feel like that was such hype and like, like, and then just, just kind of like have that taken away from you. Like, what did you do to counter that? Or like, do you still have the hype to do more now, even though it's a year out? Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, I definitely, I, I definitely want to do, do conventions. I, 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 I hope that people are still hype enough about seven remake um, well, that we are. <laughs> I can that I, that I can that I, that I can do lots of conventions because like last last year I had been planning on doing like several conventions. I'd reached out to a bunch of conventions like you know or like 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 just like hey like before like I even like you know I hadn't talked about Roche but I was like talking to like other conventions about um tra like Trails of Cold Steel and stuff like that and 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 I was I was like um. And then once Final Fantasy VII drops, like more conventions are going to be interested. Um, but then I had a convention like cancel on me like as soon as like quarantine hit, and it was like crap. Um, and then every other convention went virtual and had to like you know, some of them had to like limit the amount of guests that they had. Um, and so it was just like a matter of like, well, okay, well I guess I'm not doing conventions this year. Um, like like the only i guess real i convention i did was palm line last year the uh mm -hmm. the um, they, they online. interviewed uh yeah i want to say it was palm line two or three yeah that sounds right <laughs> um and that yeah that was like the only convention that i did and it was it was fun and i had a lot of fun and alex is a fantastic host yeah. But it just it it wasn't the same. Like it was it was such a different vibe, and I, I I like being there with people. Like after like after I do a panel, when I like you know get to like talk to the people who came to the panel and were because I I I, I, had, I I had never really pulled in a ton, like huge crowds with my panels because I'm not like the most well known actor by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but like at like the small conventions that I did. I, I would be really grateful for the people who did show up and uh, we would just like, you know, after the con after the um, the panel was over, we'd like go outside and we'd just like talk about like, like I'm like, hey, I've only got this panel for an hour, but if you've got more questions, I'll gladly answer them outside. And I, I not being able to do that was just like, well, like this just this just sucks. Like, like I, I, I loved getting to do the, the, the panel, but it was just like, man, like there's this whole this 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 disease just killed every good vibe that could have vibed last year it was like like to give you an idea of how much i missed conventions i missed anime expo and in 2019 <laughs> i was like i'm like oh, sorry 2018 i was like i'm never doing another anime expo ever again 
and so I, I missed and so I didn't go in 2019 um and then 2020 comes around and I didn't have the option to go to Anime Expo I was like well now that the option's not there I want to go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because like Anime Expo just got so overwhelming with their two mile long line to get into the exhibit oh, hall geez. on day one. Um, I was just like, oh my god, I'm never doing this again. And they just, they, Anime Expo has been, let's say, not super great to their um, American guests. Um, but uh, like that already was just like, all right, well. If they're going to, you know, not treat us well and we also have to stand in a two mile long line because we used to have our own line and then they put everybody into one line and it was just like, even the guests. OK, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> all right. Intense. OK, cool. It was really, really it was like, whoa. All right. OK, sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was weird. It was it was a weird vibe that year. And now that I was just like, OK. Now that I can't go, I want to go. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> when I when I told my fiance like like the, the the weekend that Anime Expo was supposed to happen, I was like, "You want to know something weird? I miss Anime Expo." Like with like the most disgusted look on my face, <laughs> and he looked at me and he's just like, "Ugh, <laughs> me too." Oh, no. <laughs> The last convention I went to before everything shut down was Anime Los Angeles, and thankfully that was great. Aww. That was a great convention. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that when conventions do open up again, I get to get to go and meet people. I know there's, there's lots of people who have asked for autographs, and I I, I do want to get to be able to do the um, the from home autographs. Mm -hmm. But like, I vastly prefer meeting people in person and like getting to like you know like talk to them. Absolutely. Like, there's some, it, it's it's so much more special, not just to them, but to mm -hmm. me. Like getting to like see the people who I've made happy. Mm -hmm. It just it, it it's it's such a different experience than you know just somebody sending me like something they want signed and then I send it back to them. Like it's like oh yeah okay here you go. Um, and I, I, I do, I am glad to do those because I know that it makes them happy when I, when they get the, the, the autograph back. Um, but I don't know, it's just, it's just not the same. I, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Are you on Cameo? Yeah. No, I, I, <laughs> I applied for Cameo and like, they're just like, oh yeah, sure. Go ahead and send us your stuff. And I sent them my stuff and just dead it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not on Cameo. Oh, sucks. <laughs> I'd love to be on Cameo because that would be a lot of fun, but yeah. whatever. I've got, I, I, I'm perfectly fine interacting with people for free. I don't need to <laughs> do, I don't need to get paid to do shoutouts. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're definitely excited for you to be able to get that con travel experience for sure. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I want to go to E3. Yeah. I want to go to E3 real bad. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hopefully it will happen. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Hopefully. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. So I guess talking about, like, like fan stuff and conventions and convention halls and walking around and seeing all the cool things and all of the stuff that we miss... Um, you kind of get to do that a little bit through social media, kind of, like with your fan interactions and stuff. I do think you do oh, a absolutely. great job doing all that kind of stuff <laughs> um, and interacting well, and you. awesome. Um, but one of the other things that comes along with social media is fan art. And we, have, I know that we've talked a little bit before about it, but you have a whole fan art like collection and I'd <laughs> love for you to uh, talk about it. I, I yeah I I collect basically every piece of fan art that I get like especially if it gets sent directly to me I'm just like that's going in the folder <laughs> I've 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 to give you an idea I have a, a, a folder of um of fan art um that it's it's generally stuff that's been sent to me and stuff but also stuff that I've just like found and that folder has one thousand two hundred and six pictures in it. And to give you an idea of the volume of Roche pictures that I have, of that same album, 516 of them are of Roche. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so th that is almost half. Oh, and of that same folder, uh, it looks like 97 of them are Megaton Girl. So that's Yay. not. Mm -hmm. 
that number There's... will build mm-hmm. exponentially soon here too, I imagine. That number blows my mind already. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That, I'm just like, there's almost a hundred pieces of Megaton Girl art, and, and it, it, it's not, like, well-known at all. It's just, the the people who do it, just, they just, the Megaton Girl does not have a big fandom, but the fandom that it's got, real goddamn dedicated. That's awesome. Like, they're, they're the people who, lo- people who love Megaton Girl, love Megaton Girl. I got... I got my first fan fiction of Megaton Yay. Girl last year, and it is, it's adorable as hell. That's great. <laughs> it's so cute. I didn't know you made it. Yeah. What, uh, what is your, uh, your, um, headcanon and ship status for, for Roche, sir? <laughs> I have shipped, <laughs> uh, well, as we have come to call it, Rowdy Boys, <laughs> um, since the day I started recording. Um, because, oh my gosh, just like, I have got the biggest crush on Loud, (laughs) um, and you can 120% hear that in my performance, (laughs) um, and and just like the whole time I'm, I'm listening to like, like the, the, the Japanese and reading the script, I'm just like, oh my God, like this is coming off as like flirting and, and, and (laughs) Like I'm, I'm just like, yeah. I, I. There's, there's no way that I can't ship this. <laughs> yes. It, it was. I was, I was just like, oh my gosh. Like this is like, I, like this. Like I, I, I don't know what the writers intended, but this man is in love. <laughs> <laughs> He's in love with a man whose name he doesn't know. <laughs> well, you know, who can blame him? True. <laughs> I know, right? I think that's funny that he just immediately is just enthralled with Cloud and calls him his friend, and he never bothers to ask his name. That's a tr- that's a good point. <laughs> he, he's he's great at announcing his own name, but I would and, and actually I would say that that makes Roche the more honorable of the two because he's like, I am Roche, prepare to fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really like yeah. I hadn't even really stopped to think about that. That's crazy. That yeah. yeah. Yeah, he doesn't even know his That's name. Insane. <laughs> well, hopefully he'll find out one day. <laughs> yeah, I I, I, I I hope that one day Roche shall learn this this lovely gentleman's name. And <laughs> perhaps a little bit more. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I I, 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 I I yearn for that third dance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that the audience do too. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Oh my gosh, they though, especially the shippers. Oh Ooh, boy. boy. Oh, everybody like everybody has been shipping rowdy boys, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that like, ooh, for, for as far as like Final Fantasy ships go, that's like right behind like like Arity for me. Like yes. just like yeah, rowdy boys is just like ooh, it's like right up there. Um. Gosh, there's so many, so many ships that when I see them on my time on, I'm just like, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so, some somebody recently was just like, what's like a, what, what's what's a ship that like you, like like nobody ever talks about? And I immediately just like like was just like Barrett and Cloud, and everyone was just like, your brain is huge. <laughs> oh my god, mm-hmm. I I I could see it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I can definitely see it. <laughs> oh my gosh, That's a- and I, I love Barrett. He's an, he's another character, especially in the remake. That like I I already liked Barrett, but like the the remake elevated him to like top five all time favorite mm. characters. Yes, mm-hmm. John Bentley it's is like, so good. It's, it it's Poe from Kung Fu Panda, and then Barrett <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great mix. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Thank you for listening to part one of the Pulse of the Livestream's Assess Materia interview with Austin Lee Matthews. If you haven't already, ring the bell and subscribe below. Not only will this keep you informed when part two of our amazing interview with Austin Lee Matthews goes live, but you'll also get notified when Viz's top tier analysis videos go up as well. If you want early access to the Pulse of the Livestream Assess Materia interviews, plus exclusive additional interview content, 
please consider subscribing to the Cosmo Canyon Observatory Patreon page or the Cosmo Canyon Observatory Subscribe Star. Links below. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more updates as they happen, so stay tuned. Stay safe and take care. Pulse of the Livestream, signing off. Did you want to make a wish on a shooting star? I mean, we've got plenty to choose from. <laughs> that is pretty cheesy. Yeah, super cheesy. Totally dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You first. You can call me Megaton Girl. Aha! Megaton Girl! My greatest nemesis! What the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. Were you about to fight that supervillain? My bad. Really? Captain Valiant? Really, really. I am the hero after all. Maybe one day you'll be one too. <laughs> what? I want to punch him so fucking bad. Uh, Just one. Right between the eyes. Uh, and a kick to the penis so hard that he'll walk funny for a week. If I can't go motto a motto with Valiant, then I'll just have to be a better hero than him. So let's drive him out of town and give the city a better hero in the process. Are you ready for that responsibility? No, but I don't think I have a choice. Somebody's got to do something about this guy, and it might as well be me. Huh. I want you to die a lot. One of the enemies for life, but this all be turning the planet to an insectoid paradise and all that. Insecticide what now? Oh, right. Supervillain. No! Oh, shit! Okay, if you've downgraded from fuck to shit, then you're okay enough to get up. Get in here. The what? Eat the hell hoagie. Eat the hell hoagie? Well, if you insist. No! I said I added homing missiles! No, I wrote it on a, on a sticky note and put it on the fridge. Fucking fly! I am riding in a giant lady's hand with my girlfriend, Kirby! You know, hun? We make a good team. Fuck yeah, we do. <laughs> Megaton Girl, a story about love and superheroes. Available now wherever you download podcasts. And then Megaton Girl came back to her and her girlfriend's apartment and they totally smooched for like seven centuries. <laughs> and Connie, <laughs> I didn't write that part. Come on. Well, I mean, that is what happened. <laughs>